now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. It was early morning, and the wind whistled down the main thoroughfare of Shoreham, a small suburban town south of London. The inhabitants washed the night's sleep from their eyes, put kettles on, made tea, gulped breakfast, glanced at newspapers, and huddled in overcoats made for buses, trains, and cars. Two women, char ladies by profession, were coming off duty. They'd been cleaning the offices at the council and were looking forward to reversing the popular procedure. They wanted to get home. Sean, I'll be glad to get back and put the kettle on, Daisy. Oh, you're telling me. I hope my old man's up and about. Mine's on early shift this week. Makes it difficult, you know. Never seem able to get together these days. <laughs> You know what I mean? That could be an advantage. The times I'd like to get rid of Bert for a day or two. Man, more trouble than they're worth. Well, look at that. There's one of them taking it seriously. Pushing a pram at this time of the morning. I was going to take a baby for a walk at this hour. Must be bonkers. Oh, come on, Elsie. Don't let's hang about. If people want to act daft, let them and say, come on. Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. I tried it. Mm-hmm. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on a general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm-hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Oh. Moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, the beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode one of this story, in which John Seed and Emma Peel are assigned to an investigation which could lead both of them to a quick, quick, slow death. Two char ladies, plodding their way up the main street of Shoreham, turned round to watch the podgy figure of the man pushing the pram. It was an unusual sight, partly because of the early hour and partly due to the man's appearance. He was short but powerful. His age was the wrong side of 40, and he was puffing a bit as he pushed the pram up the hill. The pram itself was also unusual. It was old, Victorian, a bassinet more than a pram, and it was very large. At the crest of the hill, the man stopped, applied the brake to the pram, and entered the telephone booth. Money. If I got enough change here. The man was about to drop a coin in the machine and press button A. When he glanced out of the windows of the booth, the pram's brake wasn't holding. It slipped off as the pram picked up speed. The man dropped the phone hastily and, bursting out of the booth, raced after the runaway pram. The two char ladies joined in. That's all, baby! Stop the pram! Oh, he's got to stop it! Hold up, wait, wait! The pram gained speed, rocking sideways as it sped downhill towards the traffic intersection. The man raced by the two women just as the pram reached the bottom of the incline. It bumped off the curb and careered into the center of the road. The man made a flying dive, grabbed at the handle of the pram, just touched it as... <laughs> the van, coming round the corner, skidded as it tried to avoid him. It caught him a glancing blow which flung him into the gutter. The pram slowly tipped over. The contents spilled into the wet road. The two char ladies panted to a stop and looked down at the signal. Oh, oh, blimey! Look, look at that! 
Oh, out of the pram. But he, he's not a baby at all. He's a fully grown man. He needs in clothes. And he's dead. Shot in the chest. that day improved considerably as the hours passed. By lunchtime, the sun managed to banish the watery clouds. Down in the country, John Steed was putting in a little target practice. <laughs> Steed operated a small target launcher. It tossed empty beer cans into the air. Steed snatched up a gun. He was really doing quite well. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, appearing from behind a hedge, caught the can neatly. Oh, that's Hmm. Hello, Betsy. Good day, Mr. Peel. You appear to be in splendid form as a fielder. Oh, well, I have been told that as a silly mid-off, I have few equals. Well, I'd like to make yourself useful with us. Mm, you mean launching the beer can for you? Good. Mm -hmm. Two in a line, both barrels. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> but, Steve, you didn't invite me down here to act as a gun bearer. Uh, that's true. There's someone down here I'd like you to meet. Oh. With a view to work, business, pleasure, romance? A work. I was afraid of that. Here we go again. <laughs> Steve, you missed. Well, of course, that was a full can of beer. My pre-lunch and refreshment. Hate to see good beer going into orbit. Who am I to meet? Well, it's fair. He used to be a top agent, but he's now relegated to traffic control. Traffic control? Mm, for incoming spies. He's the man who makes the general arrangements on their arrival. You know, he's used to their accommodation, money, necessary cover, all that sort of thing. And why should I meet him? Well, he um, had a bit of an accident earlier today. Ran off the road, got knocked down. All a bit of a mess. There was also a dead man in full evening clothes. Oh. And what does Mr. Willie Fair have to say next to me? I don't know. He's up at that house on the rise over there. I haven't seen him yet. Thought I'd wait for you first. Right, last two cans of steel. Like to try? Anything you can do, I can do better. Annie Oakley Peel, that's me. Let him go. The house that Siege had indicated turned out to be a headquarters for interrogation. In one of the rooms, Captain Noble, a tough-looking army type, paced the floor. A holstered revolver on one hip made him look a dangerous man. He was. He just isn't saying anything, but a darn thing. The captain turned from Steve and Emma Peel and glared at the man sitting in an easy chair. There he sits, head bandaged, arm in a sling. Doctor says he's quite okay, not had much at all, but he just won't talk. You have a go, Steve. Steve approached the chair. Uh, who was he, Willie? Who was the man in the pram? Uh, the man you were supposed to dump? Who was he? And why was he in full evening clothes? Willie made no reply. Didn't seem to hear a seed at all. Of course, it could be delayed concussion. I don't think so. Seems to me it's a case of good old-fashioned stubbornness. What about the dead man? Where does he lead us? Oh, he's completely unknown to us. Here's a suit he was wearing. Pockets were empty, all labels removed. And it had recently been dry cleaned. No clues at all? Not unless you count the fact that the suit didn't fit him well. Didn't fit him? No. The evening dress was not the perfect fit. Well, then perhaps he hired it. Possible. Well, where does that take us? Now, our only hope of identifying that dead man is this. The captain flipped a photograph onto the table. Well, what is this? Just a flowery design with the name Lucille engraved at the bottom. What is this, on a label? Yes, yeah, this is the only label that couldn't be removed. It's a photograph of a tattoo taken from the dead man's right arm. Oh, yes, well, I'm told it's a dying art. Well, I'll take the uh, hired suit angle. You'll take the tattoo clue, Mrs. Peel. Shall we go? Sometime later, Mrs. Peel called upon one of the most famous salons in London, Toby Tintry's Terrific Tattoos. Toby was working on the stomach of a lady dancer. I want it to be a pretty snake. Sort of all curled round, so when I dance, it kind of comes to life, huh? I I understand, dear lady. Just just control the abdominal muscles, and I'll endeavour to oblige. You have a most interesting job, Mister Tintry. Is this one of your designs? Mrs. Peel showed Toby Tintry the photograph. Hmm. 
Oh, oh yes, I think it is. Yes, oh, I'll <gasps> still now. Oh, it kind of tickles. I like it. It's kinky. Oh, there's a selection of designs over there on the table, Mrs. Peel. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. <laughs> My most popular designs are always, I love whoever it is. Um, closely followed by, what is home without a mother's loving touch? A lovely thought, don't you think? Of course, that's only for big people. You need plenty of room to get in that amount of work, you see. I told him one sort of skinny fellow, it was too soft. As I ran out of space and ended up, what is home without a moth? Tragic. Yeah, completely sport a lovely sentiment. Uh, Shut your moment, Mrs. Peel. You can tell me what you'd like. An engraved guard around your left leg? Well, no, actually, I... No, no, perhaps rosebuds, pretty pink rosebuds, one on each leg. Uh, I don't want to be tattooed. You don't? Then what? This photograph. Do you recall uh, who you worked on? Who was it? Peaver. Uh, Mr. Peaver. Funny little chap. Tinny there, glasses, middle-aged, nervous. Oh, I'll be bit down, I'll be well. And he wasn't married. Oh, he told me so. And you get to know a lot about people in this business. Uh, get under their skins, so to speak. Ah, there. That's finished, Dad. Oh, off you go now. Uh, and what's Peaver done? Must be something or you wouldn't be asking all these questions. He was involved in an accident. What you'd call a write-off. Oh, dear. All that work for nothing. And you want to know who his seal is. That's right, Mrs. Peel. That's right, Mr. Tintry. That's dead right. While back in the interrogation room, Willie Fair still sat motionless and lethargic. The captain continued to pace the room. Steed had left. They were alone. There was a knock at the door. Oh, that'll be food. The only time you open your mouth is to eat. The captain moved towards the door. Willie's eyes flickered, fastened on the revolver at the captain's belt. Willie stood up, removed his tie, and moved silently after the captain, his hands outstretched and murder in his eyes. And with one last alert, Sam Lacey finishes washing his dog in just 17 minutes, 45 seconds. Well done, Sam. Play any other sport? I lift a pint of beer now and then. You look very fresh, Sam. What deodorant do you use? Shields for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shields for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. Oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water either. And sure enough, every bit of grease is up. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers, Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel, is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.